which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So for those who have your Bibles and sharing with us on television, hope and pray that you are having just a tremendous, tremendous Christmas. And I hope and pray that God will bless you to come into this new year uh, prosperous and more blessed than you were in the prior year. For those who have your Bibles, I am in Matthew, the second chapter. And I'll begin reading from verse number one. Matthew writes, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, 
During the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the mad guy secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and incense of mirror. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. And all of God's people said, my subject is, Jesus is the true star. The first thing we notice in my text verses is that these Magi, known today as the three wise men, came after Jesus was born. Jesus was around two years old when they came to visit, and not just born, as of course the modern-day nativity scenes show. They give us the shepherds, the sheep, Mary, Joseph, the infant, Jesus wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, and the three wise men, of course, with their gifts. The second thing we note is that they were wise men, not wise women. That was for you. <laughs> If you come to church regularly, you would have understood exactly what that was about. <laughs> that was what we call a shot. <laughs> but wise men and women and children still seek Jesus today. Give a hand clap. <laughs> History tells us very little about these quote-unquote wise men. They came from the east. As Magi, who were scholars that studied the stars, similar to the, to the Mayans, only more credible. Because the Mayans, of course, told us we wouldn't be here today. Now, I read a lot more on it. I found some of the Mayans didn't agree with that. But the way it's come down to us, you know, on Friday was your last day. Now, if you really believe that, you should have really gave to the church then. Since you weren't going to do nothing with it anyway. Obviously, y'all didn't believe it. <laughs> we really don't know how many of these wise men there they are. Uh, we, we assume three because they gave three different gifts. So no one truly knows the, the actual number. They saw his star in the east, followed it, and went to King Herod to determine exactly where the one born king of the Jews would be born so that they could worship him. This star was probably a, a luminous meter, but in any event, it was supernatural. This meteor was something that we would not have been able to explain today. But God can do all things. And God calls this unusual appearance to guide the three wise men to Jesus Christ. 
King Herod was appointed as king by the Romans, who were, as most of you know, biblically and, his, and historically, were really the rulers over Jerusalem. But they appointed a Jew so they would have Jewish representation. That person was King Herod. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a cruel and ruthless murderer. He had his own wife and her two brothers killed because he suspected them of treason. In reality, Herod didn't want to come worship Jesus. He was trying to use these wise men to locate Jesus so that he could kill them. Because in his mind, he was the true king of the Jews, not Jesus Christ. Herod's scribes and scholars tell the wise men that the scriptures declare Jesus was to be born in Bethlehem in Micah chapter 5, verse number 2. That passage of scripture reads, But you, Bethlehem Ephratah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. So the scriptures declare that Jesus was to be born, the Christ, the Christos, the Messiah, was to be born in Bethlehem. It's interesting to me that these Jewish scholars knew where Jesus was to be born, but they didn't seek him. These three wise men, Gentiles, and Gentiles were not supposed to know who God is. It's the Gentiles who left Herod to go to Bethlehem and to find and worship Jesus. Some of you are under the sound of my voice and watching on television. You may not have been raised in a, a religious home. We are now in our society, I would say, second, third generation of people who know nothing about church. This is the reason that even the gangbangers can go and kill people in church because they have no respect for church. But ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know, even if you didn't come up in a deeply religious home or had deeply religious role models as parents or guardians, that don't mean God can't move on you and change your life. You can be the one that guides your entire family to Jesus. Oh, come on and say amen. You see someone in here today, I believe that God is moving on you on the inside. And you are seeking to know Jesus for yourself. And when you seek Christ, God, like these wise men, will lead you to him. In Matthew chapter 10, verses 7 through 10, we are told that they go forth, these wise men, on to Bethlehem. And what I love about the story, when they go and search for him, they went on their way. Verse number nine says that the, the star that they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. Now, you know, this is some kind of star. And when they saw the star, they were overjoy. This should be a time of joy all throughout the world, celebrating that, that true star, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amazingly, this star went ahead of the three wise men, stopped over the place where the child Jesus lived. I can't explain it. But the scriptures declare Jesus to be the bright morning star. In Revelation 22 and 16, out the mouth of Jesus himself in the final book of the Bible, which I just finished teaching on last week, in Revelation chapter 22, verse number 16, 
I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you the testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. And what? The bright morning star. Today, we call celebrity stars. And the world, especially Americans, are fascinated by their wealth, by their fame, by their ability. Let me digress for a moment. For those who want to be a star, you really do not want to be a person that no matter where you go, people know you. You just think you do. Ask Michael Jackson when he was a lion, running around covering up his face, hiding his kids under paper bags. <laughs> I can't go anywhere in the southern suburbs without being known. I ain't no celebrity because all I got to do is go to the north side. <laughs> I know exactly where not to find. I go right to the north side. Nobody know me. And if I leave town, it's really over. But there are people who really want to be a celebrity. They want to be a big shot. And I want to speak the truth to you today. Many of these quote-unquote stars, they lack character. They lack positive direction for their lives. And they are terrible role models for our children who try to emulate them. They are sexually immoral, drug and alcohol abusers, and addicts. Disrespectful is in. But as I often speak to the young people, what's cool about being a sinner? What's cool about being disrespectful? <laughs> Think about some of these stars like Lil Wayne. You want to really be like that? <laughs> I was watching them on TV recently, just cussing everybody. Let me say something to you. Don't let him move. Stay right there. Watching him on television the, the other day, talking to the media and stuff. He thought he was being cool. What you want? And he said some things I can't even just say out here. He thought he was being cool. Let me say something to you young people. That don't make you cool. That make you look stupid. <laughs> Those same people that you are saying that to are evaluating you as ignorant. Yeah. Because you have to be ignorant to talk like that. What you want, who you think you is, and get the blankety blank out of here. I wish I had thought to put a big X through him, but I didn't think about it. <laughs> and since we let you know, we are not just picking on African Americans. We got Lindsay Lohan too. Yeah. Why do you want to be like her? She live in jail. She forever got issues and problems. And these are the people that are going to be your role models who haven't achieved nothing, really. Anybody can have money. Drug dealers got money. But to have respect, to have peace of mind, to have people admire you, to have people feel that you're a person worth emulating, that's something to aim for in your life. And just to let you know that I ain't picking on just the, the, the young, the, the, you know, the, uh, the, the new kid, Lil Wayne and, 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 and Lindsay and some others. I won't name them. I'm, I'm going to deal with some of the old school ones in a moment. These people really are fallen stars. They ain't real stars. These people come into the spotlight for a little while and then they're gone. Because they crazy. <laughs> Even Satan was a star before his fall. His original name was Lucifer. The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter number uh, 14, verses 12 through 15, and I'm reading, How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the 
stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the Mount of Assembly on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. I will ascend above the top of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. But you are brought down to the grave, to the depths of the pit. Anyone who lifts himself up in pride and arrogance like Lucifer or these stars of today or yesterday will always be brought down. Anyone who does not worship or live for God and is stuck up on themselves is always going to be brought down. Because there is only one true star and Jesus is that star. Jesus himself says, like a star in John 8 and 12, that he is the light of the world. In John chapter 8, verse 12, and I want to read it because I want you to know what the Bible is saying. In John 8 and 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have what? You see, ladies and gentlemen, light dispels and overthrows darkness. You see, ladies and gentlemen, a light must have a source. And believers are to be the light of the world. You who have been born again and filled with the Spirit, you may be the only light that your family sees. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16, the Lord Jesus says these words in his Sermon on the Mount talking about us being light. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and he gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, what? Let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. And then Paul picks up on it in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and verses 5 and 6. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Now, here's what I want you to know. Never forget, you and I are not the light. God has made his light to what? Shine in our hearts. But we are not the light. Don't get scared. Right now, you should be able to see me if you can't see your neighbor. The light is on me, but I am not the light. I can move, and the light will follow me, but my movement still does not make me the light. I can move over and talk to someone about Jesus, and they can see the light on me. But the light on me still don't make me the light. And so when God gives you a chance to share your light, this little light of yours, with somebody else, Don't spend that time telling them how you don't drink and you don't smoke and you don't gamble and you don't curse. What you got to tell them is, let me tell you about where I got my light from. You got to point them to the light. You got to point them to Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Give God the glory. Tell your neighbor, this little light of mine I'm going to let it shine. Your light and my light is to guide people to the source of light in their life. John the Baptist understood this. And in John the first chapter, verses 6 through 9, John, who Jesus' first cousin, said these words. 
There was a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light. So that through him all men might believe. Now listen carefully. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light. The true star that gives light to every man coming into the world. You see, the true star, Jesus Christ, there's nobody like the true star. Why do you get hung up on all of these earthly stars? Their millions of dollars ain't going to do you no good. Some of these people, these earthly stars, they're selfish. They don't think about nobody but themselves. But Jesus, the true star, he was selfless. All about others. The Bible says he came to give his life a ransom for many. Earthly stars are all about fame and and how great they are. But Jesus, the true star, sought the glory of his Father. He said, I came to bring glory, not to myself. I came to bring glory to the Father. The earthly stars are about accumulating wealth. And more wealth and more wealth. And let me share with you the foolishness of it because let me tell you something. They might not have told you this, but just as surely as there's a place called heaven, there's just as surely a place called hell. And your money means nothing in hell. And you want to talk about the value of riches meaning nothing in eternity. The Bible says that Jesus, now think about this. He's the almighty God, saw that the only way he could save man was to come in the form of that baby that we celebrate this week to give his life a ransom for many. But what you also need to be clear about is this. Before Jesus Christ came to earth, The angels in heaven were bowing down before him. They were lifting him up. And then the scriptures say, though he was rich, he became poor. That through his poverty, you and I might be made rich. As he prepared to go back to heaven in his high priestly prayer, Jesus says these words to the Father. Glorify thou me. With the glory I had with you before the world began. He gave up his glory in heaven to save us sinners on earth. And I'm going to come to church and praise him every chance I get. At home, in the morning, in the afternoon, and when the sun go down. These earthly stars, what they have belongs to them. But not with Jesus, the true star. He made us rich. I'm going to say, I ain't got no money. I ain't talking about that kind of wealth. He made you rich on the inside. You wouldn't really know you're rich when even though you don't have a lot of money, you tell people, I don't need nothing. Wow. In this day and age where life is snatched away from us so fast, When you can look around at your husband, your wife, your kids, your grandkids, your mom and dad, your cousins, your extended family, and people are just doing okay, you got food on your table, clothes on your back, roof and shelter over your head, you may not have the nicest house, the nicest car, but the temptation solved that a long time ago. Say, hey, it gets you where you want to go. Say, your car might be old, but it never failed to get you where you want to go. Thank God for it. And you begin to see the gift of life and health, and you have matured to the place to understand, if I've got those things, I'm a rich man, and if I don't have them, I don't have nothing. Let the church say amen. We hope that you have been blessed by this broadcast, and we look forward to you worshiping with us on Sunday mornings at our 1015 a.m. service. Also, we invite you to join us for our Tuesday night Bible study at 7.30 p.m. and lunch on the Word on Wednesdays at noon. Please visit us online at www.victoryapostolicchurch.org. If this particular sermon blessed you and you would like to order the full broadcast worship service, please send a check or money order to Victory Apostolic Church. 
We would gladly accept your credit card purchase Monday through Friday between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Please include the broadcast title and number along with your selected choice of media, CD or DVD, 